I was in a I was in a woofy kind of mood. You're in a woofy mood. Yeah. What does that mean? It means what it means. It means you just gotta. Are you a furry? Be honest with me, pool boy. Are you All a furry? right, welcome to the podcast. We dig deep. Depression session. Me and pool. Me and pool boy. Me and weed man. It's pool boy and weed man today. Yes, sir. Welcome back to the Depression Session podcast, guys. It's me, Weed Man, and Pool Boys. Pool Boys previously stated. Today, we're going to be talking about the topic, How Creativity Helps Mental Health. Now, I picked this topic because it's something that's pretty near and dear to my heart. Uh, being creative and making things is something that I do to help with my mental health. And it's kind of the only thing that keeps me sane. <laughs> so, <laughs> damn. I figured why not make it a topic for this episode of the podcast but before we get into that how have you been pool boy how has your week been um pretty good just had a job call phone call An interview. interview okay um like three minutes after they we hung up they sent me an email saying that we're not interested in you okay yeah how'd that make you feel yeah uh, pretty pretty depressed how come not depressed rejected no, I feel like I put my hopes a little too high on this. Fair, yeah. I mean, a decent paying job for a fun enough job. True, yeah. And... It's hard not to get your hopes up. Yeah. Yeah, I feel yeah. like. Managing expectations is something that I really struggle with, you know? Mm-hmm. I have a tendency to build things up in my head, and then I get there, and it's not that, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah. Well, why did I come here? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Every time I go to a party, I think it'll be different. I yeah. think I'll be on the dance floor talking to people. Nope. <laughs> you just sit there in the corner on your phone. <laughs> Not knowing anyone. Yep. And then the people that I do know are talking to people I don't know, so I, I feel awkward to go up there. <laughs> yeah. And it's like their party, so they're busy nonstop, and they can't have time to entertain guests, and the guests they do entertain, they prioritize other people. Go on. And sometimes, like, the food is ready. But you're like, you don't want to go up there because you don't want to be first because you don't want to grab the food. Yeah. And then, you know, it's just like awkward kind of just eating by yourself, watching everyone else have a conversation when you're just eating there. And then everyone speaks Spanish except for you. Okay. So this is definitely a personal experience you've had. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it is fine. I had a fun time. That's good. That's good. Have you ever thought about working on like becoming more social and being more extroverted? Speaking of that, Yes. In fact, so I went to college, uh, and I figured out, all right, I sign, I'm signing up for my classes. Okay. And my first class I'll ever have is public speaking. Oh, yeah, well, boy. That's honestly a really good thing to get good at. It is. And to learn. Yeah. It's important. Mm-hmm. It's uh, for the winter semester, so it'll be an accelerated course. Oh, nice. So instead of 12 weeks, it'll be... Six? Yeah. Nice. So hopefully that'll make it easier. Hopefully. Typically I think we'll... not, but... Yeah. Because typically it's the same amount of work, just in less time. Yeah. Just a lot more talking and a lot shorter of a span. Yeah. I think I'll think I'll take I'll take that I'll take that sacrifice. It'll it'll push you more though. You mm-hmm. know, you still have to learn and adapt even quicker. Yeah. So it's good. Mm-hmm. And it'll help with the podcast even even. Yeah, true. Because it'll help you enunciate and speak properly. More right, properly. like like what I just did right now, saying the same word twice. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> No, that's something that I, I work on a lot, too, is, like, pronunciation, enunciation, like, slowing down. Because I have a habit of just speaking and not stopping. Yeah. So it's something I've been trying to work on. Is just kind of it's really down. annoying. I know. Trust me. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. Imagine how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what comes out of my mouth, imagine how my brain is. <laughs> Damn. No, I get you. I have that. I mean, like, you don't you don't mess up, I feel. When, I mess up a lot with my speaking. You don't think I mess up? Uh, not as much as me. Fair. Not so, as much as I used to, anyway. Imagine my brain. I don't want to. <laughs> See, the thing is, I think we have very similar brains. It's just I've kind of, like, I had to work on it a little bit more because of my serving job. Mm. I kind of was forced to have to, like, slow down and work on it a little bit more. Right, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I just kind of did the opposite. Yeah. I hid, and I got a job that I didn't have to talk to anyone with. Yeah. And I loved it. I know. I, I would, too, honestly. Which is kind of why I was hoping for this job, because it, it, it's another out-of-my-comfort-zone job. Yeah. It's a shame it didn't work out, yeah. but it's fine. You could always get a restaurant job. I could. Those really force you to talk to people and really force you to get, like, <sighs> confident and, like, not... It really... You, you really got to not have a temper, 
You know what I mean? Like, you gotta be able to put up with people's bullshit. Yeah. Not that I don't... It's not that I have a temper. It's just that I'm gonna break under the pressure. What do you mean? I... I, I just... I don't want to deal with people. Okay. Because if I do, and if they, like like you said, they're, they're bullshit. Yeah. I'm going to crack. I'm going to cry in a corner. Yeah. No, everyone that's worked in a restaurant has that moment. Yeah. Or a couple moments like that. Yeah. Like every now and again, you'll just have a shift where halfway through it, you're just like, I want to go home. <laughs> yeah. And then you, you clock off, you sit in your car and just sit there. <laughs> I think I, I'd rather get a job of what I'm good at, what I've been working with. Yeah. Which is just janitorial. Yeah. And, you know, it's what I'm good at. It's what I know. But, man, I just can't find one. Yeah, no, custodial is kind of a, it's kind of a hard thing to get into, it seems like. Because I feel like everyone stays in the position. Yeah. Because I feel like it's, it doesn't have a high turnover rate like a lot of other industries do. Like, restaurants have an incredibly high turnover rate. What does that mean? Uh, basically means they're constantly hiring people, people are leaving or firing. It basically means they're constantly, like, rotating employees. Right. Like, there's been so many employees of the restaurants I work at that I can't even count them or remember half of them. Fair. Because people come, they either don't like it and leave, or they come and they move to different restaurants. There's a high, a high turnover rate just means there's constantly people coming and going. Mm-hmm. With custodial, I feel like people just get the job and just stay there. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're right. Is that a bad or a good thing? <laughs> um, I mean, it's good if you can get the job because that means you can stay. But it's bad because it means it's a little bit harder to get the job. Mm-hmm. Which is why, uh, I just want to find a decent paying job. I had a few opportunities, but I don't want to take a full-time job with college. That's fair. Yeah. Because I don't know how my brain will handle it. Yeah, no, that's fair. I've heard horror stories of people doing it. Yeah. It's definitely possible. And those people are like, they're, they're smart. Yeah. Those are people i can fully expect them doing really good and stuff and me you could do it i could but i don't know see lily the the vast majority of life and like what it's about is just being disciplined with everything and also believing in yourself you know what i mean because if you're just constantly i can't do it i can't do it you're never gonna do it this is fair but if you just push yourself and believe in yourself then you can do whatever you want also very fair and if you don't push yourself you're not gonna grow as a person you know what I mean? Like, in order to grow and mature and learn, you got to be able to push yourself on at least something. Right. Because you're not just going to grow and learn just sitting sitting down at home, you know? This is very true. This is very true. Yeah. I'm tired. I'm not tired. <laughs> Creative stuff. When you're tired, you write. When you're tired, you do stuff. Art. Yeah. Art, yo. You got to push yourself. On your worst day, you need to be able to outperform your enemy on their best day. Oh. <gasps> True. Oh, Sun Tzu. That's some Sun Tzu shit right there. I think, uh, I think it was Andrew Tate, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Ugh. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Or it'd be a bad thing. Yeah, it's whatever. What do you think Andrew Tate? I think he's alright. I don't know enough. That's fair. Personally. That's fair. Well, I know some people wouldn't like him. Some yeah. people hate him. Yeah. Good for him. He's successful. Not me. He's the most Googled Google man on the planet. Really? Yeah. I don't know if he still is, but he was at a time. That's funny. Really? That's a hell of a title, most Googled man on earth. Damn. Who do you think... Who do you think... Has that honor. Of what? Being the most Google man on earth? Yeah. Let's find out. I'm betting Adolf Hitler's on one of them. <laughs> 100 most searched people of Google in 2023. Oh, interesting. Alright, we got... Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Messi, Ronaldo, Drake, Cher, Elon Musk, Beyonce. I don't believe this list. It makes sense, no. Putin. <laughs> Putin. <laughs> Usher, Johnny Depp, Tom Cruise, Bad Bunny. There's no way Obama is 33rd. <laughs> Mike Tyson. I don't believe this list. 41. Hold on. <laughs> Here we go. Actual Google Trends. All right. Back on topic. Back on topic. Today's topic. 
<laughs> Today's topic is how creativity helps mental health. Right. Do you have any experience in creativity helping your mental health, boy? Well, I suppose that's the question. What is creativity? Okay, go on. So, is creativity like something you physically make? Okay. Or can... Because I feel like I'm, I haven't done too many creative things. Okay. However, if you count using other people's creativity okay. and what they've worked... And you kind of explore that, i.e. video games, okay. movies, yeah. television, a form of creativity, yeah. and you use that. And, because for me, oh, video games. Oh, my darling video games. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> it's definitely been something to escape with. Definitely. Something to ease my mind. And... Like, or even like Minecraft, for example. True, yeah. A game that you use your own... A game meant for you to use creativity. Mm-hmm. Being able to just build your own world, make your own house, explore at your own pace. It's fun. Yeah. And... It's definitely... It's definitely helped during yeah. times of loneliness. Especially like playing with friends online. True, true yeah, true. Or any other game. Okay. But in terms of, like, doing creative stuff, like, I mean, I guess the, this podcast True, yeah. is a way of expressing creativity, and it connects us. Yeah, definitely. It connects us and the boys. We have a lot of fun doing it. True. Uh, it's almost like a communicative thing. What do you mean? Well, because, like, we, we work on it together. Yeah. And it... Increases our bond. Together. True. Yeah, it definitely does. It's like I can feel your heartbeat when I'm on this podcast. Good. That's what I want. I can, looking at your lips, I can imagine what they taste like. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you don't have to imagine it if you don't want to. I think it's part, it's the fun of imagining it. Like wondering, damn. <laughs> damn. The fun is imagining what it tastes like. Cause like kissing you, I'd probably be really disappointed. Cause it's probably not gonna taste what I think it tastes like, right? What do you think it tastes like? This is a good question. Mm, right now, it, it looks a little, it looks a little dry. <laughs> yeah, hold on, hold on, man. I get it. Fuck you. I get it. Probably tastes like a cactus with a hint of weed. With a hint of that good kush. A whiff of that marijuana. Uh, a hint of the good stuff. Please, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to put on my chapstick this morning. I'm sorry, it's no, winter. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where was I? So you went, so I asked you how creativity helps mental health, and then you started talking about video games and Minecraft, and then you started talking about kissing me. So, you know, I mean, it was a very creative way of taking that question. True, true. So w when you think of creativity helping your mental health, think of other people's creativity, right? Basically? Uh... Or do you think of other people making something that you can be creative with? Yes. Okay. Like D&D. True, I was just going to think that, yeah. Or just going to say that, yeah. Looking, I, oh my gosh. There's so many, like, there are so many tabletop RPGs that I want to buy, but man, they're expensive. Mm -hmm. And man, is it a hobby that, man, oh man, you can't really get people in. Yeah. They kind of already got to be in it. Yeah, you got to, like, you got to, like, oh, I can't get off topic. But if you can get those people in. True. Oh my goodness. It's a wonderful world of magic and horror and and magic <laughs> <laughs> so what is it about the creativity of Dungeons and Dragons that either you enjoy the most or that helps you with your mental health or makes you feel better well uh, repeat it <laughs> you what sorry go ahead. No, what were you going to say Re repeat the first question <laughs> Okay, so what is it about Dungeons and Dragons and the creativity of it that helps you with your mental health? 
Or what do you enjoy most about the creativity of Dungeons and Dragons? I'll take either of those. Okay. So, I as of right now am not the most talented person. Okay. Like I I can I feel like realistically there's talent and then there's creativity. Okay. And they both work hand in hand. Okay. Yeah. Like you can creatively imagine these worlds imagine these characters Mm -hmm. and imagine like like in my eyes like as an author as a working as a hopefully author in the future yeah um aspiring author aspiring author that's the word um i can imagine these stories and how it'll begin how it'll end some plot points in the middle what these characters will go through and then there's the talent okay or i guess the skill talent and skill yeah both are interchangeable both and skill is more earned and talent's just kind of born with. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah, fuck talent. Yeah. Talent's a bitch Honestly. who has favoritism yeah. and racist. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, well how's a racist? <laughs> because favoritism. You're right. No, yeah. I'm not. I don't know what talent preference is, but I mean, there's a reason. Never mind. I'm <laughs> going to be quiet. I'm going to be Say quiet. It. There's a reason why the Asians are so smart. <laughs> Racism. That's more cultural, but okay. <laughs> I know, I'm just being stupid. I know, go on. Um, but um, but in order to actually use your creativity mm-hmm. and to put it in a cohesive book with a script, yeah, with good storytelling, good dialogue, that takes skill. Yeah, it does. To make to imagine like world building, same thing. You can imagine these great cities and these populace and the political dramas within them. But it takes skill to actually write a map of your world. Yeah, no, it does. And even to, like, really go into the absolute details of it all. True, Who's yeah. the leader of this country? What kind of uh, political party is it? Is it a Republican? Is it a... Wait, what? Yeah. Is it a republic, a democracy? Yeah, 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 yeah that's what like I meant. That, yeah. Is it a... Uh, 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 dictatorship. Dictatorship, whatever. right, right. How... What do the people think of it? Yeah different cultures different races of people uh, the livelihood of these people you know it takes a lot of work yeah. as well to fully develop and to let your creativity flourish true which is why like video games such as Minecraft and even like regular old video games with their own stories it's they do the skill part for you mm, true yeah they do mm-hmm so they give you the tools. They give you. They give you like a layup. They essentially. give you. Yeah, they give you the foundation, and they even provide you the tools, mm, and sure. you can just go in and have fun. You want to imagine yourself as a superhero who can just go around and kill things and do crazy adventures. Even like that's like any basic RPG. Um, like building your own cities. Well, there's lots of like there's city skylines. True. Flying around the... You know, there's all sorts of games for any kind of imagination you can think. Yeah. However, that is why it is so fun for me. That is my desire to be an author. Because there are some things where it's like, Ooh, I like this part of the game, but I want more. Yeah. I want this in it. Or, I like this, but I don't like that. Okay. I want to create a world, a story, that has what I like. Mm. Everything that I like about it. True, yeah. With the ending and the beginning, exactly how I like it. You want to be your own thing, right? Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. What is it about that that draws you to it? Like, what is it about having your own thing? Um. Like, is it simply just that it's your own thing, or do you think it'll, like, fulfill some, like, deeper need or something? I think it's more of a, not a need, but more like, I have these ideas. Yeah. And I want, I have the creativity, but I don't necessarily have the skill right now. Okay, that makes sense. But I can imagine it. And I've been imagining it for years. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. No one is going to be able to do it for me. Because they don't think what I'm thinking. Yeah. And even if I tell them, like, hey, I have this idea. They're going to interpret it their way. And I... I just want to see it. I want to have a tangible version of these characters that I've imagined. I want to see what I'm capable of in terms of writing, in terms of storytelling. 
I just I want to make something that is imagination into a reality. Okay, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. And I get that. I get that. What you mean um, about the whole like creativity versus skill thing? Mm-hmm. That's kind of why I struggle to make things sometimes, is because what I creatively make up and imagine in my head is perfect, and it's exactly how I want to do it, and my skill doesn't line up with it. So I have a tendency to get burnt out and frustrated because it's not yeah, exactly how I want it to be. Exactly. That's something I really struggle with when it comes to creativity, especially with music. Mm. That, that's part of that's, that's the main reason I don't really make too much music, is because I think of the song in my head and I want to know how it sounds and I have the specific sound that I'm chasing, but I don't know how to make it, and so I just get kind of frustrated and just like, why am I bothering? Yeah, somewhere? that that's the biggest learning curve out of everything yeah no, what you're gonna make in the beginning is gonna suck yeah it's gonna be trash it's gonna be bad yeah no one's gonna like it but you're gonna have to do it yeah, yeah that's no. gonna be the way it is which is also why i like tabletop rpgs because they kind of give you a story to work with it's specifically D and it's like modules they give you a story you can alter it but it's more than enough. Okay. Which is why the time I feel like I did DM, I did DM a few times. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of fun, and it worked pretty well. They did pretty good. Mm-hmm. They did pretty good. I was only there for like one session, but I liked, I true, liked true. what you did. Mm-hmm. I want to get back into it. I just bought a whole other tabletop RPG, Dolman Wood. I am... I'm mm. fucking... Mm. I can't wait to play it. Oh my god. I I I want to play it so much. I am debating putting this on the podcast. You should. Making it a let's play. You should. I should. The whole reason for this podcast is to give all of us a platform to do whatever we want and be creative and make the things that we want to make and the content we want to create. So whatever it is that you want to make, go ahead and make it. And if you need help, I'll be here. Thank you. Dolman Wood, if you want to f- send me free stuff, please. <laughs> so... What did we talk about earlier about getting our hopes up? Anyways, <laughs> as much as I want to DM, as much as I want to like be an author, it is kind of like scary. No, it is. It's scary to do anything creative because you're taking a part of yourself and throwing it out there to the public. Yeah. Um, because some like there is an understanding, like you send it to like, like you write something down, and it's like a rough draft. Yeah. You send it to your friend. You know that's what's nice. You gotta have the confidence the mm-hmm. bravery the confidence the bravery to send it to people you trust yeah and how do I put it be brave to accept criticism true yeah it's hard to accept criticism it is especially especially when it's so close to you yeah yeah when the art when the project is so close to you and when the criticism is especially harsh. Yeah, no, I get that. Because, mm-hmm. like... It almost feels like they're rejecting you and not the work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it's not even that. It's just, it's just... It's just like a gut punch. Yeah, true. It's just so, like... like it just hurts. Oh, yeah. There's no real explanation. And there is an explanation, but it just... It just hurts. Yeah, no, it does. It really does. Mm-hmm. I had that in the beginning with my music uh, where everything was so fucking bad. <laughs> Some of those songs I'll go back to and listen to and it's like, oh my god. At the time, I thought they were bangers. <laughs> but, and it's like if anyone would like criticize it, it would, it would like physically hurt because that music was so like personal and private to me mm-hmm. that it felt like they were rejecting you know, me more than the music. It especially hurts when you think it's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because then it's like, oh, well, the other stuff I've made that I thought was good is not good. <laughs> mm-hmm. But you got to keep on going. Yeah. You got to push that fear aside. Why don't you go ahead and ask the next question, poor boy? This is true. Um, so... It could be towards me. It could be just in general. It could be something we both talk about. You know, whatever the, whatever the next question is you want will be what it is. Hmm. It kind of goes back into our last session about, like, the internet mm-hmm. and how, like, social media. Okay. Do you think with the help of social media and more of the help of the internet, more that communication and imagery is so much more widespread? Okay. Do you think it's 
made the the mass the people like the average guy yeah more creative or less creative ooh I don't know um cause there's there's two sides yeah cause one we see other people's work yeah and we get inspired mm-hmm. like how do I put it like video games there's a thousand kinds of video games and like for video game developers you see these games and you find inspiration yeah in fact, that's it's 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 so much easier to find inspiration from things nowadays. Oh yeah, totally. And with all these kinds of different forms of creativity, like like art, like just general painting. There's digital painting now. There's digital art. There's safe for work, and then there's not safe for work. <laughs> but so you have so much options. Yeah. But because you have so much options, it's a little fearful you're actually no you go ahead and explain it so the way i see it right mm -hmm. is that yes it's true that there's a lot more creative things being shown to us so we can get we can get inspired and find our niche easier than ever right right because before you could have been into you could have been into rock and roll right Mm -hmm. Back in the 60s and 70s, but you could have lived in Europe where it wasn't as big, or at least it's not the same type of rock and roll that was in America, right? So you had no clue that was your niche and that was your true passion and your talent, but now you can find that, right? Right. However, everything is so oversaturated now that everything, all the good people and everything that's perfect is always what's shown. And so I feel like for a lot of people, they see that and they're like, oh, well, it's kind of already figured out, or oh, I'm not as good as them, so why bother? You know what I mean? So I think it I think it escalates the natural fear that people have with being creative and it can lower confidence. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And then it is it, the other side of it, right? Is it social media and the internet gives everyone a platform? And so there's a lot of people that think they're good, but they're not. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think it can lead to kind of hyperinflated ego and cause people to not work on their stuff as much because they have all these fake followers and stuff. Right. So what do you think about when you get good at something creative, it brings a feeling of pride? Right. What do you think of that? Like, has there ever been anything that you sucked at that was creative that you worked on and got good at that you could be prideful about? Because that's my biggest thing when it comes to being creative and making things. It's like, don't get me wrong, I really enjoy the process of it, the creativity, the... The brainstorming, the recording, the editing. I enjoy all that. But my favorite part about making anything is the feeling of completion and saying, hey, I did that and I like it. And that sense of pride that I get that said, hey, I made something. Yeah. That's what I enjoy most about creating is the finished product. Right. What were you asking? Like, What's the exact question? Have you ever made or done uh, anything that brought your pride? Have I ever made anything? Like creatively. Creatively, most of my songs I've made so far True. have been trash. I wouldn't say that, but okay. Maybe like one song. Well, no, because you, um, you made Quickly Now. That's the one I was talking about. Okay, that's a good one. What was the other ones you made? I'm talking about like finished stuff. Yeah, I'm thinking. There's not. Was that, was that the only song you finished? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess there was the other ones we made with um, Rolf and that. Yeah. Yeah, there were those ones. We gotta make more music. We do. Comment down below if you'd like to hear a full album from us. <laughs> oh, I'd be so down. Wait, no! Mother, Sister, Girlfriend. Mother, Sister, Girlfriend, yes. I'm proud of that. That I, I am proud of that too, even though it was entirely <laughs> random and off the top of your head. It turned out fucking phenomenal that's why i love it how improvised it was and how well it worked it's so funny but in terms of like uh my actual personal projects like um like writing so far i haven't written much i did write one well I, no no i've written two things okay i've written kind of like a beginning of a story okay that was kind of trash okay and then i wrote i guess a small poem that i've never showed you actually oh really and that one I, I showed uh, my girlfriend, okay. and she said it was really good. Nice. She liked it. Um, I can't think of like on a on a scale on yeah. like how logistically, well, like realistically good it is. Yeah, I get you. But I think it was, I'm proud of it. Would you want to share it to the podcast? Ooh, you know what? Fuck it. Poem time, baby. I am alone again.
Everyone is everywhere else, and I'm stuck here. Here is where I am. No one wants to be where I am. Where I am is far from everyone else, and it's lonely. Very lonely. And yet, I'm happy here. I must be, right? Why else would I stay here? I can leave. I have no strings. I have control of myself. Why do I stay? Someone else has come here to visit. Here, where no one else is. Why are they here? The place where I am alone. They want me to leave with them. To the place where everyone else is. They try to move me. Do they not know? I like it here. I have no strings. They cannot control me. Now I know why I like it here. Here is where I have control. I control here because everyone else is there and not here. It is here I feel safe. They are leaving now. Back to the place that is not here, but where everyone else is. I wonder why they came to visit. It does not matter. I am happy here. I must be, right? I am alone again. It was very good. I liked it. It was very good. I liked it. Uh, I have no idea how to write a poem. I just put some fancy words together. I think it sounded good. <sighs> so, what was the what was the inspiration or the meaning behind that? What was it about essentially? Uh, it's about how I am antisocial. Okay. And how I low key desire to not be antisocial and to communicate with people. Okay. But then when I do, I panic. Yeah. And so I go back into my little shell. Okay. And the extroverts that I know in my family, or just people I know, they say, hey, you want to come to this party? You want to come hang out? Why are you in this corner when there's a whole dance floor over there? Yeah. And then I'm like, nope. Okay. I'd rather be over here. Okay. Alone. And then I start to pity myself for being all alone, even though I did it to myself. Okay. So it's basically just like being stuck in a perpetual cycle? Kind yes, of thing. Exactly. A brought on self perpetual cycle. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. I feel that. I've done that a lot in my life. Yep. I really have. Uh, that's something I still kind of do. Um, so I get that, boy. Poetry. It's one of those things you just kind of got to work on and push yourself out of. Mm-hmm. It literally, that's all it takes is just forcing yourself out of. Uh, that's why I'm taking the public speaking. It's good. Bunch of strangers. <sighs> I have no idea what I'll talk about. I don't know how that class will work. I don't either. So how did that make you feel writing that out? Did it make did it make you feel better about anything? Oh. Like did it feel good to kind of let out those inner thoughts and inner worries? Mm. I suppose in a way it was nice to put it and write it down. Yeah, put it in the words. Yeah. And I'm I'm I was fairly certain that it was something that meant people could relate to. Oh yeah, that's what I I did. Mhm. And I wondered if, how I put it, like, um, well, mainly I wanted to write something to see how good at writing I am. That's fair. In in a story, or not in a story, I don't even know, in a poem sense. I get what you mean. You just wanted to write to see if you could do it. Yeah. I wanted to see how well I could express my feelings. That's good. And I think it went pretty decent. I think it went good, honestly. Especially considering, because that's like your first time writing a poem, right? Oh, yeah. It, especially for a very first poem, I think that's very good. Genuinely, I think it was very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Send it to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to you? Yeah. You got it, boss. You've read that one poem I wrote, right? Oh, yeah, that cute, the one in high school? No, it wasn't high school, it was after high school. But the really long one? Yeah, I remember that one. The, um, I'd paint your name with the stars if I could. I believe so, yeah. Do you want me to reread it? <laughs> sure, I'd be down. Depression Poetry Session. <laughs> yes. She was a free spirit bound by anxieties, so many goals and ambitions of her true self, all chained back by fear of failure and disappointment. All I wanted was to set her free and see how high she soared in the skies of creativity, success, and happiness. I thought I could, but she was comfortable with the chains and didn't want to let them go, so she let me go instead. I fell from the heavens of euphoric promises down to earth where every bone of self-worth shattered. 
but the ghost of ego possessed my broken body and moved on. But my soul, who had fallen in love with the most beautiful counterpart it had ever laid eyes upon, forgot. Fuck. <laughs> but the soul, who had fallen in love with the most beautiful counterpart it had ever laid eyes upon, never forgot. She had the most beautiful soul to ever have been created by God himself. I'd bet everything I have that he took extra time creating hers. She had a soul that wasn't easily forgotten. It felt of a slightly crisp breeze on a warm summer's day. It smelled like a million... It smelled like a million of the most fragrant flowers. The creativity that it possessed was boundless, and the love it carried was even more limitless. Its beauty could not be matched. But everything must come to an end. She gave me feelings that have long since been scattered by the winds of time. I dropped them on the floor of ignorance, and they broke just like all the fragile glass promises I've been given. There I stood on those shards, not seeing how, du how deep their cuts ran. I stood there, letting them bleed me dry of all my energy. It wasn't until I realized how much pain they caused that I stepped aside and watched as they turned into dust and blew in the wind. Truly I, say to Truly I say to you, at that point I had moved on, but I still had one small shard of glass in my foot. One so small it caused no pain. Fuck. One so small it caused no pain and went undetected by the radar of progress. One so small I didn't think anything of it, so I left it be, holding on to the memories of what could have been, but some memories are made to be forgotten. So by me writing this poem and drawing this mural, I dig out the last shard and release my feelings unto the plane of creativity and art, where they can both flourish and scatter into the wind like they should have so long ago. It's time to fully let go of what once was thought of as past. It's time to reconcile. Audio. Fuck. What? That was good. Was it? <laughs> yeah. Loki, my smooth brain couldn't understand the beginning. Which one? Which part? No, like the whole beginning. She was a free spirit bound by anxieties, so many goals and ambitions of her true self, all chained back by the fear of failure. Right, right, right. What 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 point did you start to understand it? Uh, like the glass part. Okay. So once it hit the she gave me feelings that have long since been scattered by the winds of time, I dropped them on the floor of ignorance. And they broke like all the fragile glass promises I've been given. You know what? Tell me what the story meant. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what the poem meant. So the poem meant Basically, the first paragraph was describing this girl I knew so fucking long ago um, that she was very creative, but she had a lot of fear and anxiety in her life. Right. And I would constantly push her to move past that and all of that and to just believe in herself, essentially. And she just didn't really want to. And I just kind of had to accept that, that I wasn't helping. Um, and then things with me and her really didn't end up working out. And partly, you know, partly on me. I'm not going to admit. I was young, kind of stupid, mm -hmm. uh, immature, if you will. Um, and I held on to a lot of... I held on to it for longer than I should have. Not too long. Like, not like a weird amount of time. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it still wasn't a healthy amount. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just had to... It's, it's basically about this girl I really liked. Things didn't work out. I had to let it go. That's the... Teal, that's the TLDR of it. Yeah. There's there's more details about like the creativity and all that, and the glass and the fragile glass promises and all of that. Uh, it's just a very expressive way of writing it. Uh, it took me like I think like three days to write. <laughs> oh, not bad. Yeah. I think it took me my poem. Better part of an hour or two. Well, that's fine. A lot of my poems did too. A lot of my poems they just kind of pop into my head mm -hmm. and I just write it down. Like. uh this one, the sun broke my heart, the moon shattered my dreams, hope I can find salvation in the stars. Uh, and I went a little deeper into it. I said, when the sun broke its promise, sorry, when the sun broke its promise of eternity, the earth was plunged into a cold darkness. When the moon, when the moon led on its intentions of lighting the earth in its darkest time, the earth got hopeful, just to be cracked to its core. Now with those two gone, the stars shine so bright. Now with those two gone, the stars shine ever so brighter. But they're so bright and so far away, the earth doesn't know if it can ever reach them. Oof. That one, basically the first two were different women, and the third one was a girl that I really liked, but I didn't <laughs> feel good enough to talk to her. So there's that. Mm. <laughs> if I could recreate the world, I would do so and make it one where you're the happiest that could, that could be, even if it's without me. Damn. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to get on a tangent about my own shit. But, you know, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. No, I, I get you. I get you. <laughs> but thank you for sharing. Yeah, yeah of course. I, I, honestly, I kind of miss writing poetry. Mm -hmm. Like, I really do miss it. It was really fun. 
I still write things every now and again. Like, I, like again, something will pop into my head. I'm like, oh, I gotta write that down. Mm-hmm. But it's that, that's really as far as it ever gets now. It's just it's in my notes on my phone, and it just kind of stays there till it dies. <laughs> Did it feel good writing those poems? Oh yeah, I needed to. You know what I mean? Because mm. that, that's kind of why I made this topic of creativity helping mental health is because it's the biggest tool for me to help my mental health. Because it allows me to express things and get thoughts out of my head. Because I think so many fucking things all at once that things kind of build up, and so I kind of need something to release my thoughts onto. Because otherwise, I'll go fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I just, I need to have that release of things to create and get ideas and thoughts out of my head and help me process things and kind of work through things. Right. Because I'm not that good at processing emotions on my own. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it's not really that I'm bad at it. I just kind of choose not to. I don't, I just don't devote time to it. And so, like, if I can create something with those feelings, it helps me a lot faster and a lot better. Very nice. Yeah. Poetry is weird. Did you like it? I don't know. You like some of it, but not all of it? Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's how I am, too. Like, the poetry that's, like, super, super wordy, I can't understand it. Mm. Like, there's some poems I'll read that I just don't understand what the fuck they're saying. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, well, with that tangent aside, I think that'll go ahead and wrap up this episode of the Depression Session Podcast. Thank you guys so, so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed now that being said pool boy do you have any questions comments concerns anything you wanted to part on the audience i hope you enjoyed our poetry okay uh give us your criticism in the comments below yes please do tell us if you hated it okay tell us if you liked it yep tell us if you want to buy it and sell it for millions of dollars tell us if you loved it if it made you feel things if you took your pants off to it i'm sorry pool boy (laughs) No. <laughs> I think I took my pants off when I was writing it. My did poem. you? Yeah. Yeah, I did, I did things to it. You did things to it? Passionate things. Really? Passionate things? Mm-hmm. What kind of passionate things? I lit a candle. Really? You yeah. lit a candle while writing it? It was that passionate. Damn. You get on the, the satin pajamas. You get in mm. your silk sheets. Yeah. Right, with your feather quill and your parchment paper. And my spank my little spanky uh, handle tool what yeah passionate your sp- you, oh you mean like a like Spank a paddle, paddle yeah <laughs> you had a paddle <laughs> yeah damn i'm just imagining you in your room just all candlelight satin pajamas at your desk with a with a quill and parchment papers and it's halfway through you just go yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it has the word daddy on it oh, no. poetry daddy <laughs> All right, well, I think, I think with that image burned into everyone's mind, mm-hmm. that'll go ahead and officially wrap up this episode. Thanks again for watching. Come back next Monday at 12 p.m. for the podcast episode. Come back Friday at 12 for a gaming video. And come back Wednesday for a special Wednesday videos. Typically vlogs or gaming. It's kind of up in the air. But subscribe if you like it. And remember that just like this podcast, depression is just a session and it too soon shall pass. So we'll go ahead and see you guys back here next Monday at 12. Goodbye. Goodbye.